In 2021, Canadians lost $231 million from scams and frauds. And that's just what's been reported. With technology becoming an increasing part of our daily lives, knowing how to spot potential scams and what to do if you fall victim to one is essential. Yeah, so I, uh, my name is Jeff Horncastle. I'm the Acting uh, Communications and Client Outreach Officer at the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. I, uh, I work on a lot of uh, fraud prevention, media interviews, um, get the messaging out there through presentations and uh, whatever, whatever way we can. At the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, what, what exactly is that? What, what does it all do? So the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre is Canada's central repository for mass marketing fraud and identity fraud. Um, so this is where you would report um, anything related to mass marketing fraud. We share the information that we collect with the public for fraud prevention and education. And uh, we share the information with uh, law enforcement and private and public sector partners. Digital literacy is so important for some individuals who've grown up on the internet their whole lives, specifically out here in the West. They're sort of aware of the things that are coming in. Like if you get a text message for, for instance, that says, oh, your account has been hacked, click this link to protect it. That might not actually be the case. So I guess in this conversation, what is digital literacy and what are some ways people can improve it? So there, there's so much in digital literacy. The main thing is, is to recognize from the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center's point of view is to recognize, you know, a scam. Uh, be aware that the fraudsters are using so many different mechanisms now to to try to get into your accounts, try to steal your identity, uh, try to get into your bank accounts or, you know, those are just a few examples. So it's just a matter of being able to recognize, you know, whether it's a phishing text message or an email or if you're getting a strange message on social media asking you to click on a video, just be aware that it's always best to take a step back. And if you're not sure, reach out to somebody uh, reach out to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, a friend or family member, and ask them what, what they think about it. it. You know, a lot of victimization happens in the moment very quickly. So if you take a step back, take a few minutes or take as long as you need and, and look into what you're receiving or reach out to the organization they claim to be, if you're getting a text message or a phone call or whatever, that can save you from being a victim. Yeah, I've seen so many videos online of these people that specifically target individuals who maybe new to the country, or the elderly asking them to get access to their bank account and like, oh, you accidentally spent too much money. There, There's a ton of literature and videos that people can look up online of situations like this. Uh, I think one of the important things is if someone ever asks to pay for something in gift cards, it's probably not real. <laughs> exactly. You got it. So it is a common payment method that we're seeing at the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center with various scams, you know, and uh, not, not just gift cards, but cryptocurrency as well. Um, not to say that, you know, fraudsters are asking for wire transfers or other payment methods. It, it's not a scam, but uh, like you said, you know, if anybody's asking for, for payment with a gift card or cryptocurrency, know that it, uh, it is a scam. When you mentioned a little bit about phishing scams, what are some of the other scams? I, I remember some of like the, the OG, the old school stuff would be like emails that are talking about like, a Nigerian prince or something that needs you to transfer some assets to him so that he can unlock more of his wealth and share it with you. So that's like a really old one. What are some of the other types of scams that we're seeing today? So that that is a really old one, but still circulating. Uh, we classify that one as a foreign money offer, uh, kind of with inheritance letters, you know, that you get either by fax or in the mail. They're going to be, a, you know, a long lost relative and they left a an inheritance for you so that that is still circulating so many different scams that we're seeing ryan investment scams are, are the big one based on dollar loss in 2022 alone over 308 million was lost to investment scams and by a long shot that was you know the number one based on dollar loss so largely due to the fact to the emergence of crypto investment scams so again do your due diligence if you're looking to invest into cryptocurrency or whatever the case may be, check in with your, your provincial securities commission, see if this company is registered. Don't base it solely on that because a lot of these fraudsters will copy the names of real companies. You want to do as much digging as you can see if they're registered at are they registered dot, uh, dot CA. Um, and, you know, a lot of these platforms are very realistic looking. Um, if somebody approaches you on social media, uh, keep in mind, you know, that, they could be compromising your, 
your friend's account on social media and sending out these messages. So just, you know, unfortunately we have to have our guard up and uh, yeah. So, you know, romance scams are still up there. Number two, based on dollar loss. Uh, we touched on phishing. That would be the number one reported scam based on number of reports with over 10,000 reports received with the CFC in 2022. And that's only a small chunk of, of what's actually out there. Because I mean, if I look at my phone, I can see, I can count probably at least 10 phishing emails that come in to my my email address because I've, I've had my email address for a while, right? But uh, yeah, uh, overall, less than 5% of victims actually report to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. So the numbers we're providing is actually only a small chunk of what's actually out there. Well, it can be incredibly embarrassing. Like if you find out afterwards, like, well, I was just scammed. For someone that's probably devastating, you're like, I don't want people to know this happened to me that I fell for this. But it's important to go out there and... And, and reach out and be like, hey, this happened. Because the more information's out there, the more people can be aware and we can help reduce the number of events like this. And when protecting ourselves, I, I know just some small things, like just off the top of my head, uh, when receiving emails that you think maybe be too good to be true or something that's like, oh, your account was hacked, some kind of thing. Double check with the information in there if it's, is that actually the bank or financial institution that I'm with? And then look at the email that it's sending from. Don't just look at the the name that pops up there. Make sure to click on it because I know so many times I'm like, oh, this is information that's relevant to me. Let's just double check. Oh, this is just a random array of numbers and letters in this email address. Clearly, this is not meant for me. <laughs> That's exactly right. And uh, I mean, uh, I think what you touched on is email address spoofing. Uh, we see it quite often. So instead of the name of the person it's they put in, they try to put in the actual, you know, legitimate email address of the organization they're trying to spoof. So it's important to dig a little deeper. And sometimes if you click on reply, the actual email address it's coming from will appear. Or if you're on a computer, you know, hover your mouse over that, that email address. And like you said, you know, you might see a random bunch of random numbers and and letters at um, you know at, at some random domain that doesn't make any sense. That you know if it's claiming to be the CRA, it's not going to be at Canada.ca. It'll be like at whatever something random, right? So something else to keep an eye out on. There's so many tips on our website as well, Ryan. Like I mean, it uh, and the importance of reporting. I think there's this. Uh, the Canadian Anti Fraud Center doesn't investigate and people have to realize that although we don't investigate, we do share the information with law enforcement. And uh, we always give the example of, you know, if there's a victim in, in Winnipeg and another victim in Halifax, by reporting to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, that information can be easily linked together for investigators, right? So that, that's the main, one of the main purposes of reporting to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre is, and it gives us the ability to share the information with the public like we're doing today. So what are some other ways that people can prepare themselves for scams, be aware of, and what steps should they be taking if they unfortunately fall victim to one of these sort of situations? So number one, prevention and education is the best way uh, to protect yourself, you know, whether you're new to, to the country or uh, for anybody, really. Just, you know, go on the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center's website. Every type of scam is listed on our website. We kind of, we give a breakdown. We have examples of current phishing messages that are circulating. Obviously, we can't put them all out there. Check with your, your local police too. Are they, uh, you know, local police across Canada share a lot of fraud prevention information messaging. And of course, reporting. If you have been a victim, important to contact your local police and the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. But keep in mind that um, even if you haven't been a victim, you can still report to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre as well. Besides scams or things like this, uh, what are some other ways people can be vulnerable online so a few examples is i mean protecting your personal information um we see a lot of identity theft identity fraud and uh, that can be linked to something as simple as you know if you're using the same password for a bunch of different accounts um probably a bad idea because if one of these accounts gets uh, compromised and you're using that same password on all of your accounts and you're potentially compromising or putting at risk all of your accounts right so we always advise to try to use a different complex password for each account that you have and that way you know you'll be protecting yourself that that's one way and of course just just being diligent if you're not sure do as much research as you can if you're looking to make a purchase online or whatever you're trying to do online always be careful and it never hurts to double check with uh, with whoever you can 
I've heard so many stories of individuals who go to buy something online and then it just never shows up. And then you call the number on there for the customer service deadline. Yep. You got it. And on top of that, I mean, there's, there's so many different counterfeit uh, scams out there as well. Right. So, I mean, uh, you know, if you're looking for a name brand, make sure that you're going to the legitimate domain and uh, you know, not to say that uh, all ads on social media are fraudulent, but have your guard up, do as much research as you can and uh, protect yourself from being a victim. Yeah. It's all about being careful because there's nothing worse than having one of your accounts locked or like gotten into and you're scrambling trying to like, oh, now I got to double check everything. Okay, let's block my cards or something like that. Like it can put a lot of stress on you. So taking these proactive measures beforehand can save you a massive headache you in the it. future. Exactly. Yep. And I would also suggest changing your password regularly. Don't have something that you've had since you started your first email address, like back on like what is it, MSN Messenger, <laughs> and things like that. Change it up regularly. And if you have troubles remembering them, one of the things I do is just make sure I have a notebook somewhere at home where I write down all my passwords. You don't want to save that on your computer or somewhere that if it does get uh, accessed in some way, they could find that information. That's right. So make sure it's like a physical spot that, okay, what are my passwords? Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's, that's a really good tip because like you said, if you have it saved, all your passwords saved into a document, then your your device gets compromised and you're putting yourself at risk, right? So yeah, Notepad is a really good idea. Um, that way there, I mean, your, your passwords are much safer in your home than they would be in a different a computer. Document. Exactly, yeah. Here's something I've always wondered if you're like, your computer gets like accessed or anything, would unplugging it from the internet, unplugging it from the power, would that be a legitimate method to try and protect it in like your first like reaction? Is that is that something that would work at all, or is that already too late? It, it probably it would work. Uh, we see it a lot with uh, tech support scams, you know, where you, you might get a pop up on your computer saying that they're you know Microsoft has detected a, a virus and uh, the victim ends up giving remote access to the fraudster. Right? We I mean that that scam has been around for a really long time. Um, so in that case here, you know, with that example, we always advise turn the computer off and uh, keep it off until you bring it into a technician, a local technician, and never give remote access to anybody to your computer. But if you're, you know, in the case where your computer has been infected, you don't know how by malware or whatever the case may be, and you're, you're aware of it, then uh, absolutely. So if you, if you turn that computer off, you can, you know, reduce the risk of your, your information. I always wondered that it's like. They're in your system. No, just quickly, <laughs> quickly unplug it. Okay, so that's that's good to know. So if you think something's off with your computer, shut it off, remove it from the internet. So that should protect a little bit. And then you can like call someone to ask them further about like, okay, what steps should I be taking? Okay, exactly. And I mean, if, if, you, if you are aware that that happened, it's important to, uh, to follow the steps uh, if you have been a victim to identity theft. Because I mean, a lot of us have a lot of personal information on our devices. And we don't know what information the, these fraudsters have taken from our computer, right? So they may have copied our hard drive uh, if we're using a computer, whatever the case may be. So yeah, the, the steps are all listed on the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center's website to protect yourself from being a victim of identity fraud. Um, so there is a difference between the two. Identity theft could happen in different ways, you know, whether you're part of a breach, uh, whether you clicked on a phishing email and provide a personal information like your social insurance number, or driver's license number. If that is the case, you want to protect yourself from being a victim of identity fraud, where which is where the fraudsters will apply for credit cards in your name and cell phones or whatever they can, right? So contact the credit bureaus, contact the financial institutions, contact the local police. So there's a, an extensive list to follow on our, our website this is a lot of information or a lot of great information to think about not only for our listeners but also for myself to make sure because there's always new scams so you always want to be prepared uh where can people go to find out more information what is that website yeah so the website is antifraudcenter.ca and um we also have social media pages where we we post current alerts uh facebook twitter anti-fraud center or canadian anti-fraud center you can follow our pages um but yeah most of the information that goes on social media goes on our website as well and like i said every every type of scam is listed on our website 
So if you, you have the time, try to go through them. And, uh, you know, if you feel like you're protected, well, you know what, educate yourself so you can educate a loved one or a family member because it can happen to anyone. Have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight? Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was Utah. And have yourself a good one. Thank you.